Shalom. Shalom and welcome to the White Rose Family Channel. This series is called Rise of the Judges. Do we think, if you're tuning in for the first time, let me say this. My name is Seminiah. With that said, let's get started. Do we honestly believe end times is ramping up, that the wicked ones are having their ways with wars and famine and civil unrest and all kinds of debauchery and sin and wickedness? Do we honestly believe all of this will happen in our midst with children of Yahuwah seeking to learn what is right, what is set apart? Do we honestly believe this can happen and children that want to learn what's set apart will not experience or witness judges? The time is now where we will see a rise of the judges, rendering and executing a judgment, a judgment that in some cases will be so severe, for some it will lead to the extreme of instant death, physical death, Extreme sicknesses. Some will experience discipline to correct them, to renew them. Everything has a beginning, my brothers and sisters. And in this segment, though it is entitled, Who Worked First? It's a look at Shabbat. So many people look at Shabbat in so many different ways. Not realizing Shabbat was made for man, not man for Shabbat, but we look at it in so many ways and we forget the most widely celebration or acknowledgement of Shabbat leaves out that it began with Yahuwah. Now, if you're tuning in for the first time, the side that is up have the addresses where I speak about verses and passages that mention or lead into mentioning about judgment. So let me read them real quickly. And if you've read them before and familiar with this, you can fast forward beyond this slide. It's Proverbs 31, 9, Ezekiel 24, verse, Ezekiel 20, verse 4, Matthew 7, verses 1 through 2, even through 9, Luke 6, 37. John 7, 24, John 8, verses 15 through 16, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 through 16. I want you to know that I'm aware of these scriptures, my brothers and sisters. I want you to know that I understand the life in them. And I believe it is important for you to know I'm aware of it because some people say, well, you ain't supposed to judge. You can't judge. By letting you know I'm aware of them, then maybe, just maybe, you may hesitate before you criticize judgment that it's going for. Believe it or not, the Almighty Father Yahuwah set the example for us to follow. The wicked one has seduced many into ignoring that it all began with Abba Yahuwah answering the question of who worked first. Responding to the words, who worked first? Let me take you, my brothers and sisters, to bring to remembrance or bring to mind if you've never read this. Revelation 22, 12, and 13 reads, And see, I am coming speedily, and my reward is with me to give each according to his work. I am the Aleph and the Ta, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. All too often we stumble, we fall and fall, forgetting how things began, including Shabbat. How things began, including Shabbat. Before we go into unpacking this message, let me present why this is critical for such a time as this. We know Shabbat is one of the commandments, but did you know that during the end times, Yahushua puts emphasis on Shabbat? Why? Because it's a timing mechanism, a day of rest, that seventh day, a day of rest. 
and end times are going to be moving. Things are going to be stirring. But notice that Yahushua, when he talked about end times, one of the first things he talked about, well, well I shouldn't say first, one of the things he mentioned regarding end times was Shabbat. During Yahuwah's speech on end times, he made it known how Shabbat plays a key part in these last days. Notice it says, and pray that in Matthew 24, 20. Matthew 24, 20 says, and pray that your flight does not take place in winter or on the Shabbat. We will discover that Shabbat is part of the schedule in these end times. Besides Shabbat being a component of Yashorah, takes flight in these end times, we must also realize correct timing. How do we time Shabbat? How do we guard it? Take a look, my brothers and sisters. So many people fail to realize when the day begins and when the day ends. Soon and very soon that will change. Take a moment and read the first chapter of Genesis, then consider these words. Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 through 3. It says, Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their array. Who do, who's doing this work? Hmm. It is the Almighty Yahuwah. It says, In the seventh day the Almighty One completed whose work? His work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done, which he had made. And the Almighty One blessed the seventh day and set it apart because on it he rested from all his work which the Almighty One in creating had made. Now if Yahuwah is the olive and the tar, the beginning and the end, which he is, and it was him working first, and it's if him, it's the beginning and the end, he started working while it was light, for he is light. He was the beginning. Then he created darkness. Then there was morning. There was a day. But so many people, when they read that passage, they just look at evening, morning, the day. They forget that it was Yahuwah, the Almighty Father, who worked first. To those who prayerfully seek to understand he who is the beginning and the end was clearly the one who worked first. One of our biggest challenges is how we comprehend. In other words, our reading and understanding of what we read. Let me show an example of what I'm referencing. Gasherol. We need to begin to unpack the realities of what is expected, what is anticipated, to walk in obedience. As I presented a passage, as I present a passage, take a moment and prayerfully examine it. In other words, I'm getting ready to present something. I want you to read it and read it again. You may be familiar with it. And let me state the case on that matter for you to take another look at it. Before I read the passage mentioned, read this. Believe it or not, the words evening actually means a separation of day and night. This could occur at the break of day or at the setting of the sun. It is important to know this is as you read the scriptures, you'll see the word evening throughout of it. And man who claimed to know Hebrew will tell you what it means this or that. Most of the words of much significance are subjective in English or in Hebrew. So I submit to you, and those who are saying that's what the word says, instead of saying that's what is written in the scriptures and seeking to discern the life in them, we will discover corrections in the days ahead. Do not assume that when the word evening is used, it is always talking about the setting of the sun or the end of daylight. Now let us continue. My brother, my sister. Come with me to Nehemiah. 
Nehemiah 13th chapter. Come with me to Nehemiah 13, 19 through 21. It reads, And it came to be when the gates of Jerusalem were shaded before the Shabbat, that I commanded the doors to be shut and commanded that they should not be opened until after the Shabbat. And I stationed some, at my, some of my servants at the gates so that no burden would be brought in on the Shabbat. And the merchants and sellers of all kinds of wares spent the night outside Jerusalem once or twice. And I warned them and said to them, why do you spend the night around the wall? If you do so again, I lay hands on you. From that time on, they came no more on the Shabbat. Some people are reading this and thinking that the Shabbat was getting ready to start as soon as night fell. So as you read this, you can say, some can say, well, that's what the word says. But what do you understand the word saying? Could it be saying to you that they got to the gate so when Shabbat started that morning, they didn't have to do any work. They just had to walk into the gate. You see, many think that it was saying that Shabbat was getting ready to start as darkness came. And many teachings promote this to support that darkness to darkness, that Friday night to Saturday night. And yes, we know the day, the names of the day is paganistic. Let me continue. Nehemiah 13, 19 to 21. Some people interpret this word as referring to Shabbat starting at the setting of the sun. It was just getting ready to start right then and there. On the other hand, there are those, including me, that see these words as preparation before Shabbat started in the morning, the coming morning. Like I stated earlier, our comprehension, our reading and understanding differ because of the way we've been taught and trained and programmed. This is why we must seek to discern and let the Spirit make the letter alive. This is important. There are some people who will say we can agree to disagree. No, that's a wicked phrase. Let us pivot for a moment and look at the definition of cycle. Cycles defined as a series of events that are regularly repeated in the same order. Like the ups and downs between pay periods. This week is in a pay week. I'm down. This week is a pay week. I'm up. Cycle. Something that occurs. Let me bring attention to Malachi 3.6 where it says, For I am Yahuwah. I shall not change, and you, O sons of your code, shall not come to an end. If we look at scriptures, we'll see a lot of cycles, my brothers and sisters, a lot of things that re reoccur. I believe when we recognize who worked first and saw the cycle, when we recognize how you who have created us with eyes that work, perform, best in daylight, that we will see the cycles of work was daylight. Every break of day, we would rise up and can work. Keep in mind, they didn't have electric lights. They didn't have bright lights. How are you going to name the things in the garden? How are you going to see the things that you're supposed to do at night? Yeah, you had the stars, and once a month you had the full moon that gave you extra light, which I believe you who it gave for a harvest time of many different plants and vegetables, fruits and vegetables. Let me bring your attention to John 1, 4. It said, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. Emphasis on light, for you who is light. 1 John 1, 5 says this. And this is the message which we have heard from him and I announce to you that the Almighty One is light. 
and in him is no darkness at all. So are we going to say that our day begins in night? If we're supposed to follow after the Almighty Father, if we're supposed to worship and obey him, if we're supposed to be as guides, as iron sharpen iron, correct one another. Have you given thought that this is, this is done mostly in light, not in darkness? Remember, I presented the case regarding who worked first from Genesis chapter 1 and 2. I also presented how he does not change. I submit to you that the Almighty who have created and demonstrated a work cycle. Shabbat is to be honored and guarded from morning to morning of the next day. It doesn't start as the sun go down as many would have you believe. And a lot of them do it because it became so, it is said if you tell a lie so long and to so many people, people start believing it. That's true when it comes to Shabbat. People thinking it starts Friday night to Saturday night. Even those who seem and appear to be among the most learned of Hebrews are sadly mistaken. Not all of them. Not all of them. Prepare to witness correction come Regarding this matter, take a look at Revelation 21, 23. It's saying the city had no need of the sun nor the moon to shine in it for the esteem of the Almighty One. Lighten it and the Lamb is its lamp. That was Revelation 21, 23. Consider Revelation 22, 5. And night shall be no more and they shall have no need of a lamp or the light of the sun because Yahuwah, the Almighty One, should give them light. And they shall reign forever and ever. My brothers and sisters, it says, and night shall be no more. Isn't it showing you the insignificance? Or I shouldn't say the insignificance. The proper place for night. The proper place for night. We should by now be aware how the Almighty Yahuwah is light. It would be wise to see that things began with he who is light and will end with he who is light. I pray that you are able to see clearly by now who worked first, who rested first. Was it light to light? Be advised, my brothers and sisters, the final exodus bring movement, which will prove to require work. On Shabbat, there will be rest. Will you be working when you're supposed to be resting? Will you be resting when you're supposed to be working? If your clock, if your cycle of work is off, it may lead to some painful regrets. Be advised of the widespread destruction, the many deaths that will occur during end times. It would be wise to be in the right place with the right people at the right time. Guarding Shabbat at different times would mean someone will be at risk of being left behind. When they're supposed to be working, they're resting. Also, guarding Shabbat at different times makes for a division. I cannot stress the importance of recognizing the cycle of work. Rise up, set apart, Yasharal. Accept who worked first and come away from misguided teachings. Do not let the majority influence you. Seek to discern and understand what must come to be. For the plan of the Almighty Father will prove he will bring discipline. In the coming days, we will witness great separations regarding the fulfillment of the final exodus. We will witness the difference between discerning what is true versus being snared by age-old teachings that are wrong, habits and lies that have been carried on and spread among many. Yasharal, it is important to walk in wisdom once time is redeemed, we cannot regain it. Consider these words in Colossians 4, 5. I mention them often. It says, walk in wisdom towards those who are outside redeeming the time. 
Where do you think the discipline will be? My brothers and sisters, what discipline will happen to bring correction to when it comes to guarding Shabbat? There will be corrections. Know who work first. Choose your position wisely. For when you are to be resting, if you're still working, your clock will be off. Your schedule may be off. You may find yourself left behind. We may find ourselves missing the boat. We may find ourselves in a position at the wrong time and wrong place when an earthquake or tsunami or war-torn web war-torn cities become as they become destroyed we may find ourselves in the wrong place at the wrong time shabbat represents a schedule a schedule that we must adhere to shabbat represents the importance a need to know when a day begins and when a day ends when to rest Who work first? Let that assist you with understanding how to measure a day. And you will find in the time ahead that corrections will be made in order for Yasharal to come together in unity. I believe, my brothers and sisters, extreme conditions will make us physically weak, many of us. And in that physical weakness, we will cry out, Abba Yahuwah. We will cry out to the Almighty Father Yahuwah in Yahushua's name. And by being physically weak, we will pause and yearn and seek earnestly to discern his voice. Pray and watch. This has begun for some already. And many of us who may not be aware of it, it will happen to us. Yashara, O oh Yashara, out of the many differences and confusions and divisions, the true set apart children of Yahuwah will demonstrate how we will be recipients of his discipline and yield to his correction and rise up in unity. How do you think 144,000 in great multitude will fulfill what is written in Revelation 7 without unity? And because some can't recognize how unity will come before the physical return of Yahushua, they disregard it. They don't work hard enough. They don't ask and seek earnestly enough for the intent to worship and obey the Almighty Father, which we should. Who work first? Pray about it. Make your decision of how you're spending your time with whom and where. And realize why this is indeed critical. Thank you for your time and your patience. Pray on these words, my brother, my sister, my family. And if you listen to this from beginning to end, I salute you and I thank you. May the Almighty Father Yahuwah gets all credit, get all credit and esteem for anything that is set apart coming from me. May my obedience in speaking to you and living a life of set apartness reflect lifting up Yahushua, the word of Yahuwah. On that note, I say to you, my brothers and sisters, Shalom.